Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video, we're going to be modifying our firmware for our Ice River KS0 Ultra. Now, there's only a handful of developers or individuals that one can kind of trust, and it's still in a gray area because there's pros and cons to both sides when using third-party firmware, but we're only going to be taking a look at the T-Swift one and the PB Farm Farmer. I just wanted to showcase or show you these guys. Uh, we're going to be working with the T-Swift one first, and then maybe later on visit the PB Farmer uh, in the future. But if you go down this path, I would highly encourage everyone to just make sure they have the stock firmware. Even though you can still use the button on some of these uh, firmware mods, um, I would just encourage you to have the stock firmware directly from Ice River. Don't go and download it from some unknown third-party source. Uh, you can see here the instructions and everything, but just go to iServer.io forward slash firmware dash download. We need the ultra one, so we're going to go ahead and grab that. Make sure it's safe and sound on our device. There it is. Um, and PB Farmer seems to be the one that a lot of people like. Uh, T Swift is one that has been featured on this channel before and many of my colleagues' channel. But uh, resoundingly, everybody likes PB Farmer. But I heard some cons as well, so you let me know in the comments. The reason I like PB Farmer, despite the fact that the fee remains at 1%, and as Casper price goes up, the fee may go up as well, because he's got to pay for development, right? He's He's got to be able to pay for the time that they're spending, he or they or she, uh, have to spend, you know, pay for the time that they're spending on these firmware developments. Um, but I love the GUI. Yes, there's some known issues. Yes, there's some resolutions. They just came out with an update not too long ago. You can see here configurable clocks and voltage offsets right in here. And we use the Ice River um, or the Ice River monitor from T Swift. We can see right now our clock is 355 stock. You can see how we can play around with it, maybe optimize it, make it more efficient. Because when you're overclocking these firmware, you know, the Cash 22 is you're just drawing that much more power. So you're making your device more uh, inefficient. Uh, but if we scroll further down, we got target temp, chip temp, board temp, min, max fans. And then this GUI, man, this GUI looks so beautiful. I love graphs. I love data. And the way they lay this out is pretty good. So PB Farmer, as you can see here, here's the logo, is the one that the community keeps telling me they love the most. Uh, looking at T-Swift. You know, it's the same things, no matter which firmware version you're going with, that you would recommend, obviously, making sure you have the firmware for your device, the stock firmware downloaded safe and sound on your device, and then obviously modifying the thermal solution for these devices, regardless of which one you go for. Uh, you're going to need to have a better power supply. You can see the different hash rates here. So T-Swift kind of gives us this information, you know, like if you want 562 giga hash, the power supply you need is 180. We have a 230, so we can push it up to 6 to 18 giga hash. If we want to go up to you know 676 giga hash, 700 giga hash, we're going to need a bigger power supply, 330 watts respectively. Now, of course, modifying the thermal solution, um, you're going to want heat sinks on your MOSFETs. You're going to want 3D uh, printed uh, fan shrouds because you want the airflow to direct directly on that power port flowing into the middle of the machine and then out the other side because you've taken off the side panels. Check out my previous videos on that and all the thermal mods that you can do. The dev fee for T-Swift is only 5% versus the 1% on uh, the PB miner or farmer. Um, but once you have all the thermal upgrades and you have a power supply that can handle this third-party firmware, there is still a risk, and we've seen that risk impact this channel specifically me because i wanted to test how far i can push the veteran miner uh six pin to barrel plug connector and the answer is you could push it quite far but it's not recommended for long-term use especially if you're applying these third-party firmware it's only rated for so much um and we melted the barrel plug to the barrel plug port on the uh ks0 pro and Matt Electron had to repair it for me. It was a good educational experience. I knew it was going to happen. Uh, I just didn't react fast enough. Like I should have just taken it off once I was done with my testing. I let it run, run, run time after I did my content. 
and it it was in, inevitable that it would happen. So long story short, stock firmware, you're going to need to improve your thermals. So fans, 120 mil fans, decent ones, maybe manually controllable fans on the external side of the housing, right? So you got the four holes on one side that you can mount to. I just zip tie mine in and then one pointing directly at the power port with the side panels off to get airflow straight through the middle, heat sinks on the MOSFETs, and then a power uh, brick, right? Laptop power bricks that can handle the amount that you're putting out. Now, I already replaced the thermal paste, the thermal pads, uh, and did all the thermal mods. So now it's just a matter of just getting the firmware. Now, T-Swift links to it, and you can see all the different firmwares for the different uh, miners. It is a Google link, and I know a lot of people don't like that, but you go ahead and download that, um, and now it's just a matter of installing it. As far as installing goes, it's fairly simple. It just says to make sure that you don't, if, if, if you're not on a third party, like if I had PB Farmer already installed and now I'm going to T-Swift, we don't want to do that. We always want to be stock Ice River firmware first, and then we upload our desired one. I already have the Ice River monitor open, and I even have the folder where I have the firmware from both parties installed. So we're going to go ahead and extract this guy and make sure that we have that good to go. And then we're going to stop this Ice River monitor and install this firmware right now. Just like before, you log into the IP of the miner, you click the firmware upgrade on the left-hand side, select file, and you go to whatever one you want. Now remember what this article says here. If we want to do the 618 giga hash, we need to have a 230 watt power supply, which we already have it. If I want to go above that, I need the 330 watt power supply. And that power supply is actually pretty cool. Um, you can buy it off of Amazon. I will drop my link, my affiliate link, not T-Swift's affiliate link, even though it is in their Telegram. 139 bucks, not too bad. And you can do multiple things. Plus, as well, you got two Type-C ports there on the end, which you can also use to help charge maybe like your you know, Windows Surface Pro 4 or, or other laptops. Uh, but we don't have this yet. Maybe we might explore in the future. But now let's go ahead and select that file. So 618 giga hash. There's L and there's H. I'm going to start off with L first. If that doesn't work, then we got it. We can go H and then the regular 618G. But we're just going to do this one right here. Open and update. We no longer need to do the INT you know, file first. You know, Restore defaults. Install the INT version. Then restart then install the one version that we do want, then restart. We just got to do this, restart the device, and I will bring you back once the hash rate has leveled off. Well, we seem to have hit a snag in the road. So even though the miner does stay mining, I would say for about half an hour, it dies off. I don't think it's the miner though. I think it's the power supply. Let me switch over and bring you on the mobile camera and let's go take a look. As you can see, the device is off. And if I unplug the power brick and plug it back in, it will come online. But this thing, when it's running, gets really hot. Let me get some uh, thermal temperatures for you. So 56, maybe 57, I think the hottest side is on the back of this thing. Like if I put my hand on this side, it is really hot right here. And there's the manufacturer in case you wanted to make a mental note. But yeah, 60, and that's just the shell. We can't even imagine what the internal components of this cheap power supply, not only quality wise, but thermals are running at. So while this thing is still running, Let's get it reset back to factory and try to go down to the next firmware. But let's go look at the chip temperatures before we hit the 30 minute mark. Because at 30 minutes, this power supply no working no more. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna reset the Ice River monitor. We're going to get this unit powered on, go back to stock power supply or the stock uh, firmware. And instead, we're going to shoot for the lower targets in the firmware. Uh, that is available for this particular device. Now, T-Swift does mention start with the lower settings and then work your way up. But I went straight to this uh, 618 giga hash one. But I just think that the power supply 
is not up to par. And what's funny is this is the second, this would be the second power supply that it possibly would die on. And from the same vendor, let me show you who that vendor is. So I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's this brand right here. J-I-A-H-E-N-G-D-E. I've ordered this. This is the power supply that's on there now. And the other power supply that I had on the other KS0 Pro modified were HNHTKJ. 26 ratings, 3.6 stars. While this one had 3.7 stars, 11 ratings. So no name brands or I guess resellers. Um, and unfortunately, these power bricks are not able to sustain. So I guess what we're going to do here is down clock it and go get that big boy power supply. This one right here that I was just talking about, which I'll have linked down in the description. It is a bit pricey, 60 bucks or less. Probably get the other 230 watt power supply for 40 bucks. But this one is 140 bit steep. But is it more reliable? 42 ratings, 4.2 stars. And it seems to be what a lot of people are utilizing. And I do like the fact that I got two Type-C ports there that I could use for other devices near the miner. But uh, yeah, looks like we need to... It looks like the weakest link is the power brick and getting it from these lesser vendors where the quality is not up to par. As I previously mentioned, I reverted back to the stock default firmware first and then i updated to the lesser firmware uh where we get the 562 giga hash we've been able to sustain it no problem we're able to get past the 30 minute mark now i really do believe the weakest link is the power supply which i will worry about addressing in a future video there's really no point in pushing it too hard because as you increase your hash rate you also increase your power draw and you're just making this device super inefficient to be honest, the 505 giga hash version at 150 watts is the more efficient one out of all of these, but it just depends on what you, the end user, want to do. Do you not care about power and you just want to get as much caspo as possible, yada, 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 so on and so forth? That's for you to decide. But we can see here, you know, the chip temperatures and everything are fine. We Our core clocks did drop down between versions. So the 618 giga hash dropped us from a core clock of 550 to a core clock of 500 when we did choose the 562 giga hash and you can see that i'm getting around 500 giga hash after 48 minutes it should stabilize a little bit more we might be like 515 520 somewhere there that's not always an exact measurement you're not always going to get exactly 562 giga hash on the firmware version that that is built for you're going to get some variance in between each firmware version but the chip temperatures are looking perfectly fine they looked fine on the better firmware version uh, sitting around 55, 57 degrees Celsius, whereas now we're sitting anywhere between 51 to 54 degrees Celsius. Some chips run hotter than others, like 7 and 12, as I noticed on this particular model. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue testing offline and compare, you know, I wanted to start with T-Swift because I wanted to see you, uh, the information and the data. You can see we don't see voltages here, whereas with the PB Farmer, uh, we can, and we get a lot more metrics and data and stuff like that. So I'm going to be playing around with this stuff offline, try to do a summary video in the future, but this video has already ran long enough. And the point was, is that there are options out there. Get the stock firmware first from the uh, the, the main manufacturer, right? Ice River, Bitmain, What's Miner. That's always your precedence or your, your main goal is to always have the stock firmware backed up somewhere before you go flashing anything. Uh, and then you got PB Farmer as one option, which a lot of people like, uh, according to the community. You got T Swift as another option. And I believe there's some more options out there. Uh, some pros and cons to each and every single one of them. I'll let you weigh that out in the comment section down below. I do plan on eventually getting the 330 watt power supply, just not right now. Just improve your thermal mods after you get the stock uh, firmware and then update to whatever the latest one is, do it bit by bit, instead of just shooting straight to 618, because I was like, hey, I got the 230 watt power supply, I can do it. Obviously, that's not the case here, because I got a cheap power supply. Uh, so start from low, and then work your way up, find whichever version is the most stable for you, your system, your environment, your thermal conditions, so on and so forth, and you should be just fine. However, stay tuned for future updates. 
not only about any miners that I might obtain, but comparing PB Farmer with T Swift and telling you which one that I honestly like or which one gave me the better performance at the targets that I'm trying to hit. I want to maintain efficiency, but still get that decent amount of hash rate. So stay tuned for updates from that. Uh, it sucks that my power supply is my weakest link and is not allowing me to uh, hash at the hash rate I wanted to test in the first place, the 618 giga hash. But learn from my situation and know that if you order these cheap power supplies from Amazon or any third party, uh, there is a risk that you're playing. And the risk in my case was, well, two of the power supplies that I ordered are crap and they can't handle uh, the output required by these Ice River, KS0, KS0 Pro, Ultra. If we're modifying them, we're pushing them beyond their limits. Thus, some things are going to fail along the way and you need to be prepared for that failure. So out of everything talked about in this video that was extra long, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below and do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.